removing your heat sink as you can see I have all the bolts out of this and I'm twisting it the uh, thermal compound has and you know heat has helped uh, stick this sucker on that processor good when you're messing with this you want to make sure that you don't force you know excessively force it you want to use as little force as, as possible because what will happen is it'll actually jerk your processor out of the motherboard and you know clip and all um, and you can bend your pins that way and possibly be out of uh, a processor so we want to uh, we want to steer clear of that type of issue you can twist it lightly you can kind of work it around and very very gently pull on it um, I have this thing up standing up which is isn't the best idea in the first place um, helps them come off a little easier if you lay them down but just be very careful guys that you don't that you don't force this because we don't want to ruin the processor here All right, as you can see here, I've uh, already cleaned the uh, thermal grease off of my processor. This is the AMD 955 quad core 3.2 gigahertz processor you saw me laughing in one of my other videos. Um, see where I still got a couple spots on it clean off, but that's what more or less what a lap processor is going to look like. Um, and that pretty much concludes uh, removing a heat sink. Just make sure you clean both sides off. If you're just taking off the lap or whatever, you want to clean your processor, um, the top here, and then you want to um, obviously clean the, any thermal interface material you, you have on your heat sink. Alright guys, um, this here is OCZ Freeze. This is uh, my preference for um, thermal interface material. Um, and I'm going to show you how to uh, apply this stuff here in just one second. Alright, so for the people that are just trying this for the first time, I'm going to demonstrate one more time. You can see the mirror finish in the lap processor. Um, when you're applying your, your thermal compound, all you need is just uh, it's just a little bit in the middle about the size of a BB that amount of thermal compound right there is sufficient um, like I said I've, I've wasted a good bit of thermal compound just because I was I was being noobish and, and was afraid that it wouldn't cover my processor. But you can see, just about the size of a BB is all this stuff you need. Just put a drop there. As I showed you the spread before, I had maybe a third more of that compound, and you saw what you saw the uh, perfect spread we had. You definitely don't want to use more than about a pea-sized drop of this stuff, guys. If you, if you are using more, you're gonna have a lot of squeeze out. You're gonna have a lot of junk around the edge of your board. Um, and you just wasting your thermal compound. All right, that pretty much uh, wraps it up for your. Thermal. All right, guys, I've removed this heat sink uh, to show you um, the amount that I put in here, the coverage that we've got here. You can see how it spread across the entire processor. I started wiping the side here, um, but I decided uh, it'd be best to record it and show you guys what it looks like. You can see on the right side where I on the right side over there where I started uh, wiping it off. But anyway, you can see how I got a nice even spread. You can see how there's a good bit squeezed out, even though I use so little. That's where I've lapped it. Um, you can see the little you know droplets where it's <coughs> making contact. Um, what this stuff is for is it's just to fill any crevice to where the metal's not contacting, to where you have some heat transfer, regardless that, that it's not actually contacting metal to metal um, but you can see you use the minimal amount of your thermal interface material and it has good spread 
just by putting a droplet in the center. If your processor is wider now, like this Hink Seek is wide, some of the new processors you're you're going to be finding that are, are more of a rectangle shape, you can put two droplets side by side, kind of like snake bite, um, and that gives you uh, that gives you more of an ideal spread. And while I'm at it, I, I uh, suppose I'll show one more time on the stock AMD heat sink. You you see these little levers? They have they have latches here, right down here on the side. I don't know if you can see that, um, but right here is the little notch that you're gonna hook those levers around. You have one on the top and one down here on the bottom. What I the way I like to do this is I just set my processor down, or my heat sink down on my processor evenly. I kind of wiggle it a little bit and then I come up here to the top side and I'm going to hook this um, pull it out down to the bottom and I'm going to take and I'm, I'm going to hook this uh, this upper latch first first here guys oh it's hard to do holding the camera with one hand alright so once we have that down make sure this uh, Make sure this uh, fan, your your fan plug in here, power connector, is plugged up to your motherboard chassis here, or fan chassis plug rather. Just connect that right up. Make sure you have this top lever latched, and um, down here on the bottom, <coughs> where you have your your thumb lever here. Make sure this is to the left. And then you're just going to take, you can pivot this this lever a little bit to your where it's at the lowest point. And um, you can see where it dropped down just a little bit. So then what you're going to do here, you're going to line it up with that latch. And then you're going to, uh, you're going to force it down. See it just popped right on there. And um, then you're going to pull this lever up and over to tighten up the uh, heat sink here and you can see there so if I do it one hand surely we can we can get some people building some computers oh, that's all there is to it guys and that's uh, the replacement of a stock um, insulation rather of a stock AMD heat sink